Brie Noble, and I decided I am going to be recording the Female Entrepreneur Musician podcast today live on Facebook because, well, I just like kind of the uh, pressure of getting on live and recording and hopefully many of you on Facebook will also be able to see this, but it also kind of just gets me to get it done. You know, I needed to get done a solo episode for this week and I thought, hey, why not jump on Facebook? So we're going to be talking today about why you might not be making the kind of progress that you want to make in your career. And I see this a lot with a lot of my students in my academy, in my Rock Your Next Release program. Um, They come in with so much excitement, with so many plans, with all these dreams that they want to fulfill, but yet they don't seem to make progress. Things seem to get in their way. And I want to talk about what's happening there. And if you know me at all, you know that I'm probably not going to baby you around this. I'm going to be pretty straight to the point and talk about what might be going on with you that is keeping you from making progress. And I certainly went through periods like this in my own career. And so I'm not saying, oh, coming to you with someone who has all the answers. I've been through these these types of things. I have learned how to work with myself to push past things that are keeping me stuck. And that's why I want to help you. So first of all, there is probably one hidden obstacle that you don't know about that is keeping you from moving forward in your career. Now, before I get to what that is, let's let me just see if any of these resonate with you. So are you the kind of person who always feels like you need to learn more? Like maybe you came into the music industry and either you didn't know anything about how it worked or you had been operating kind of in the old model and you realized, oh my gosh, I need to learn all this online stuff. There's so much to learn. I need to learn Facebook ads. I need to learn about um, email. I need to learn social media. I need to learn, you know, about sync licensing because I might want to do that. And there's so many things that you feel like you don't know and you don't understand. And maybe you have this idea in your mind that at one point you will hit this magic place where you're like, okay, I've learned everything. Now I can go forth and execute on all my learning because I'm, I'm all good. I'm never going to be taken by surprise by things that I don't know. Um, if that's you, that is probably part of what's going on here. Or maybe you are somebody who has a lot of responsibilities in your life. And it feels like your personal life is always getting in the way. Maybe even it's your job. You have another job, but yet you really want to do music, but your job always seems to be crowding it out or you have multiple jobs or your job is at home. You're taking care of kids. You are taking care of some you know, elderly parents or you're a caregiver of some kind or you have responsibilities that you need to do to help out your family. And you feel like that's always crowding out your music career. Your music is always taking a back seat. And when you get to be able to do your music stuff, then you sit down and you sit down with this really long to-do list and you feel like utterly crushed under the weight of it. You're like, why should I even start I'm not even going to be able to get anywhere with this. It is just so long (laughs) and there's so many things that I need to do. I don't even know which thing to start with. So maybe that's you. Or maybe you're the kind of artist that, you know, you, you love music. You love to perform. You love to write. You love to record. But you're not quite sure if you're good enough to warrant having a fan base, to warrant people actually wanting to come to your shows or listen to your music. And you're so afraid of judgment that you just don't put yourself out there because you're afraid that someone is going to tell you you're not good enough. 
or you're always comparing yourself to other artists and you're like, oh, their music is so good. My music isn't as good as that. So I may as well not even put it out there because they've already cornered the market on good music. Or maybe like a lot of my students, you feel extremely challenged by technology. You've been making music forever, but this new online world and how you need to communicate with people and how you need to get your music out there is just mind boggling to you. You can't get wrap your head around the technology and you, you just think if only I could go back to the old way of doing things, it would be so much easier, but you realize that you can't. Or maybe you never jumped on the bandwagon of social media and everybody is telling you as a musician, you need to be on social media. You need to build a following, but you really don't know how to do it. You feel totally out of your element. You feel like it's a huge burden on you and you don't know how to get past the fact that you really don't know how to use social media effectively. So there's a lot of reasons that you could be feeling like you're stuck. And when you are going through all of this, what it does is it creates what I like to call this reactive mindset. Because you are kind of, instead of like taking action, all these things that are frustrating you, that are making you feel stuck, are holding you back from doing anything. And so the only way that you actually take action is in reaction to something else happening. And most of the time you're not taking action at all, you know, but you're thinking, well, if I could finally get someone to handle my tech stuff, if I could finally find the right person to do my website, then I would finally get it done, but I can't possibly do it because I'm too tech challenged. Or if I could finally, if I could have a team of people, because I see all these other artists out there, they've got record labels, they've got managers, they've got a team that are helping them and that's how they're able to do it. But that's why I can't do it because I don't have a team of people. Or Maybe you're waiting for permission or validation. If you're the kind of artist that is just worried that you're not good enough, you're waiting for someone to come along and tell you that you are, that you've got what it takes and, the, and, and to, to push you out there. Like, you know, if you're standing backstage at, if you were standing backstage at a concert and the only way you were going to go out there is if someone pushed you out there on stage. That's kind of the way you guys are operating and you're waiting for someone to give you permission to tell you that you are talented enough and that you can do it because you don't have enough of that within you. Or maybe you're waiting for someone in the industry to tell you that you're good enough and you think that that's the only way that you should move forward with your career. And that's a little bit of an old school kind of idea. You know, we used to need to get decision makers to give us the green light to go ahead with our career, whether it was, you know, a manager or a record label or a booking agent or something like that. Someone that's going to come in and say, you know, I know what works in the industry and you're it. <laughs> but as indie artists, we don't get that. We have to be that for ourselves. Or maybe you are, the reason that you are in, in getting involved in so many courses and learning and reading blog posts and going to a million webinars a week so you can try to learn more and more and more so you get to that, either that magic point where you know you feel like you know enough that now you can start because you'll never be taken by surprise with something that you don't know. Or maybe you think that if you keep doing that and keep searching, you're going to find this magic solution and it's going to 
make everything suddenly work that wasn't working before. And I had a conversation with another music coach the other day and we were, I love what she said. She's like, everything works and everything doesn't. There's no magic solution. It's all about the person that's doing it, right? There's been plenty of people in my courses that have done amazing. And there've been plenty of people that have done zero. Same material, right? But it's all about what the person is willing to do. And the fact that truthfully, a lot of the learning happens in the doing. You will never get to that magic point where you've learned everything that you need to know and you'll never make a mistake. A lot of the learning happens in the mistakes, in the trying, in the action taking and the consequences of that good or bad. And I also love to say, you know, you can win or you can learn. There's no such thing as losing because when you don't get the result that you want, you still learn something and it helps you do it better the next time or decide to take a different approach. And then finally, I have to talk to those of you who, because your life is so crazy, whether you're dealing with financial hardships or family hardships or health issues or um, a lot of responsibilities on your shoulders and you think, well, I will just do this music career thing when life gets easier. Life is never going to get easier. I hate to tell you this, but it's not. It's going to be different and it's probably going to be a different set of problems. And so if you're always waiting for life to get easier, you will never move forward. You have to figure out how to fit what you want to do in your music career into the life that you have. You can't sit on the sidelines wishing you had a different life. You have the life that you have. We cannot change our circumstances, but we can change our thoughts around it. So, you know, I could have said, I can't have a music career because I can't drive or I can't have a music career because I suffer from an autoimmune disease. I can't have a music career because I have little kids and how am I going to go on tour? I didn't do any of that. And I had a lot of problems during my career, right? It wasn't like smooth sailing all the time, but I did it because I wanted to do it enough that I was willing to deal with all the consequences, good and bad, of what would happen when I just took action. I took consistent, messy action. And sometimes there were certainly those times when I was on stage and I'm like, oh my gosh, my autoimmune disease is acting up. Am I going to be able to finish this performance? And I made it through, but it wasn't fun. And there were those times when I had to take my daughter to a performance and she like threw up all over her clothes and I had to figure out how to get that all fixed before I could go on stage. But I did it and I continued to do it because if I didn't, I couldn't do it at all. So you have to be willing to put up with the crap in order to get the good stuff. So I just want to talk a little bit about the reactive mindset. As I said, we can't change our circumstances. We can change some of them, right? We can, we can um, choose to do certain things, but some things we cannot choose. They choose us. And so the only things we do have control over are, are our thoughts around the things that are happening. And you can choose to think that I'm never going to get out of this circumstance. I'm never going to have a music career. You know, I'm never going to be as good as this person or that person. Or we can choose to change those thoughts. And as changing those thoughts 
they will change the feelings and the emotions that we're experiencing around them and make them more positive. Just like I said earlier, you, you win or you learn. You never lose and you never fail. You're always learn. If you can choose to have something that seems horrible at the time become a learning experience, then you've used your thoughts to change the way you're feeling around it. And that's going to change the way you react to it. It's going to make you say, okay, I learned a really good lesson from this. It kind of sucked, but now I know how to do it better. Now I know how to do it different. And I'm going to go out there and do it differently. And that turns you from having a reactive mindset to a proactive mindset. And being stuck in that reactive mindset, it basically means that your whole career is dependent on other people. It's dependent on whether your life gets easier. It's dependent on whether someone, you know, grants you talented enough to have a music career. It depends on whether there's going to be people out there to help you when you have tech problems or people to support you um, when you, you know, feel like social media is overwhelming. And that is totally disempowering. I want you to be empowered in your music career and I want you to have a proactive mindset, which means you are the master of your own destiny. And as an indie artist, you truly are the master of your own destiny, the mistress of your own destiny. You have that ability. And I get if some of you are thinking, I can't have control over everything. It's true, you can't. And you have to take the control that you can take. Some of it is in your control. And you have to be in tune with your thoughts and realize, wow, I am having this really horrible thought around this thing. Can I change this around? Can I look at the positive side of this and see what maybe did come out of this that was positive? How can I switch my mindset so it makes me want to do this thing again? That's the only way that you're going to be proactive because you're going to get knocked down a million times in your career. And if you don't conquer this reactive mindset, you'll get knocked down enough times that you won't get back up again. And I don't want that for you. I don't want the world to miss out on your music because you were knocked down too many times and you were done. So in next week's episode, I'm going to talk about what a proactive mindset looks like and what you can do strategically to keep moving forward in your music career. But for now, I just want you to know that you're not alone in this. I've been there many times in my career in feeling like things were out of my control and feeling like things, everything was bad and nothing was good and that I didn't know how to get back up. And sometimes you just have to do it. And as you do it, you'll see that there will be fruit from that. And then you can focus on that fruit. Focus on, you know, say you only have a handful of fans right now. Would they be upset if you stopped making music? Yeah, they probably would. So focus on that and focus on growing that handful to be bigger. So then you'll have enough fans out there that would really raise hell if you stop making music. That's the way to keep yourself in the game, to make sure that you have enough people that are supporting you, are excited about what you're doing, that they would be upset if you you didn't do it anymore. When you cross that tipping point, it'll be a lot easier to get back up when you fall down. 
I mean, if I had just made a few podcast episodes and then I was like, oh, this is too hard. I can't do this. Nobody's paying attention. I'm just going to stop. I could have easily stopped and no one would have really cared that much. If I stopped now, I'd get a bunch of emails. I'd be like, what happened to the Female Entrepreneur Musician podcast? I love this podcast. I love your content. Why are you not putting anything out there anymore? It really helped me. And then I'd be like, oh my gosh, I can't let this stop me. I need to put this out here. So you create the mechanism that helps you get back up when things are hard through your own thoughts that affect your emotions and your actions and results and also through gathering a supportive group of fans and friends around you that won't let you quit. So I hope this has inspired you. I'm getting a little passionate. I'm getting a little soapboxy today, but it's just really been on my heart lately with things I've seen with my students, um, people that I've talked to in conversations that it's, it's really easy for the world to, to crush your dreams. And so I want you to, to build up these two areas of your life. So you won't get crushed such that you never get back up again. So next week I am going to talk about what the proactive mindset looks like and how that will manifest itself in your career. And so until then, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.